So, okay, the question we want to answer is, what do we need to do? What do we need to keep working on to improve our score next time? Right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So she's talking about here. You might be asking, how do these AI scoring models work? Well, the answer is, it depends on the question type. For the question types on the Duolingo English test that have a correct or incorrect answer, your response is compared to the correct answer and you receive partial credit for any part of your answer that is correct. Okay. In the Duolingo English test, in the DET, um, there are questions that are either scored as correct, partially correct, or incorrect, and um, there are open response types of questions, right? Yeah. So the questions that are scored as correct, partially correct, and incorrect, what kind of questions would those be? Read and so, so yeah. the correct, partially correct and incorrect questions. These are ones that you could improve your score on, right? Oh. Improve, improving your open response questions will take a lot of work, but these kinds of questions, practicing these kinds of questions, um, um. help you to get from that 105 to that 110. You wouldn't need to be, well, like let's say you get your score back and your score mm. is 105 again, right? Yeah. Let's say you get 105 again. Let's say that your um your uh your overall score is 105 and uh your literacy and your comprehension scores are mm. somewhere between 110 and 115. Here we see these sub scores, right? Yeah. <laughs> Questions that evaluate your literacy, mm -hmm. reading and writing, and comprehension, reading mm -hmm. and listening. So you're already high in comprehension and listening right mm, yeah you can expect to get 115 between 110 and 115 on literacy and comprehension type of questions now if you really wanted to improve your score you could work really really hard on like what you said improve your understanding of vocabulary improve your ability to do read and uh, complete questions right yeah. interactive reading questions and even summarizing the dialogue questions. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and summarizing the images in the photo. But if you really, really worked on just doing a lot of reading, you could get your, you could get your reading, you could get your literacy score from 110, 115, all the way up to 120 or 130, right? If you could get your literacy oh, yeah. score up to 120 or 130, then your overall score would also go up. Your overall score, you could that could take you up to the hundred and um, hundred and uh, ten, which is where you want to be, right? Hmm. The thing, like the most difficult thing for you, will be your production, your reading, and your speaking on topics. When they ask you, uh, to, yeah. when they ask you to speak about for three minutes on a topic, right? That will be difficult for you. But yeah. listen and write. Type what you hear, say what you like, read and speak and listen mm -hmm. and write. Those are some questions that you could also work on to improve your conversation skills. Uh, so maybe. practice reading uh, tests, practice reading tests to get faster and more accurate at responding to or read and, sorry, complete questions, interactive reading questions. Mm -hmm. you're, you're pretty good at writing essays, I have to say. 
one of your weak the weak the your weak areas. Mm. What do you need to do? What are your strong skills? Strong skills. Listening comprehension. Listening and reading comprehension. Uh What are your weaknesses? Speed of writing, accuracy of spelling, accuracy of grammar, and the big one is uh, pronunciation. Pronunciation. And this is a big one too. Hmm. Although your punctuation is good, understanding of grammar concepts and punctuation, you're good at that. But when it comes to tenses and verb conjugation and complex sentence structures, those are a little bit, those are going to be difficult for you. On the DET, subscores are measuring integrated modalities, which basically means they're evaluating two language proficiency skills at once. So the four subscores on the DET are conversation, which measures your ability to speak and listen, comprehension, which measures your ability to read and listen, production, which measures your ability to speak and write, and literacy, which measures your ability to read and write. These are also evaluated on a scale from 10 to 160 in five point increments. Pay attention to your university requirements because many universities are looking for an overall score as well as a requirement on each of the four subscores. It's important to note that the overall score is not a sum or average of the four subscores. The overall score and the four subscores are each calculated independently and they're weighted by the questions that contribute to each of those scores. So if you're curious about which question types contribute to which subscore, I will link our test readiness page in the description box down below and you can find out there. And another great resource for this is our subscores video, which is on our YouTube channel, and I will also link that. The Duolingo English test is a machine scored exam, which means that all test sessions are evaluated by automated scoring models. These models are created by human experts in the fields of applied linguistics, machine learning, natural language processing, and more. These AI scoring models are trained to evaluate language proficiency the same way that expert human readers do. You might be asking, how do these AI scoring models work? Well, the answer is, it depends on the question type. For the question types on the Duolingo English test that have a correct or incorrect answer, your response is compared to the correct answer and you receive partial credit for any part of your answer that is correct. When it comes to open response questions, which are questions like the writing and speaking sample or the describe the image tasks, where you have to generate your own language in a written or spoken response, the scoring gets a little more complex. There are many different linguistic features that contribute to your score on these question types, and I'm gonna review some of them with you now. So the first area we're gonna talk about is the content of your response. Okay, so now she's talking about the open, she's talking about the open response questions. Summarize the dialogue, speak, and write about the photo. Read, then speak, 90 seconds. Speaking sample, three minutes. And what else? Uh, speak. A writing sample. Mm -hmm. And the other one. The, uh, other, the other writing one. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's just called interactive writing. Right. Uh. Write, write, and then write your response. Uh. Open response evaluation criteria. By the way, you should uh, maybe take some notes as well. Okay. So mm. the first one is content. Um, this basically refers to the substance of what you wrote or said. There are a couple different features we're looking at in the content. One is task relevance. I've mentioned this in previous videos. It basically refers to how on task you stay. So are you focused on the question that is being asked? So try not to talk about something that's not related to the question. Also make sure you're answering all parts of the question that's being asked. So what is task yes. relevance? Hmm? Uh, re Say that again. Relevance. relevance, yeah, yeah. Task relevance. Uh, so, what can what can you do? 
to uh -huh. ensure a uh, full task relevance score. Relevance score. Um... Stay on topic, number one. And number two, all parts of the question okay oh uh, so on a okay. read and speak question if they give you three points talk about a time when you felt surprised part one mm. talk about when it was part two talk about what happened and part three uh, uh why it surprised you or how you felt Okay, you have to, if you can oh. answer all parts of that question, then you achieve a full task relevance score. So we're using an appropriate level of formality for the task. So some tasks might be more informal, like a first person story about yourself, and some <coughs> could be more formal, where you're talking about something academic or a nonfiction topic. Next, we're looking at development, which basically just refers to how well you develop your ideas. A good strategy to keep in mind for development is to make your main point and then support it with multiple pieces of evidence or supporting ideas. Oh, and the last thing... Development. What's development? development. Yeah. Development. Using uh, a formal writing style. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. She says... Right. Using a formal writing style. Development. Using a formal writing style. What is what did she say here for development? Uh I don't I have a I I uh, uh how on task you stay. So are you focused on the question that is being asked? So try not to talk about something that's not related to the question. Also make sure you're answering all parts of the question that's being asked. Next is your style. So we're using an appropriate level of formality for the task. So some tasks might be more informal, like a first person story about yourself, and some might be more formal, where you're talking about something academic or a nonfiction topic. Next, we're looking at development, which basically just refers to how well you develop your ideas. A good strategy to keep in mind for development is to make your main point and then support it with multiple pieces of evidence or supporting ideas. And the last, Okay, so what did she say there? Uh, main points, support ideas. Uh, yeah, like good. Something. So when tasked with a writing assignment, uh -huh. make sure you are consistently following the rules of academic writing having a main point and sticking to it, right? Stating your yeah. position, uh, opinion, thesis, etc. in your introductory uh, paragraph, uh, topic, sentences, etc. Always mm. supporting your claims with evidence, explanations, details, examples, at least one, right? For every claim that you make. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at is the overall effect of your response on either the reader or listener. So did you communicate your ideas in a way that was effective, engaging, and accomplishes all parts of the task? So, do the ideas communicate clearly and effectively? A mistake that um, students that are strong in vocabulary make is they try to impress the reader with their memory of complex vocabulary. Uh. Sometimes uh, when you're talking with ChatGPT, ChatGPT mm -hmm. will spit out some answer that looks really, really, really sophisticated. And you're like, wow, you're so smart. But then the more you read it, you're like, what are you saying exactly? You know? So anyway, uh, um, yeah. um, in a 90 second, 100 word piece of writing, it's nice to sprinkle in a little bit of advanced vocabulary, maybe one or two words. But for the most part, uh -huh. you 
really want to be focusing on ensuring that your communication is clear and your style is uh, interesting and engaging and not not up there in the clouds. Ah, uh, yeah. I have I have some students that are either using AI to do their homework for them or they're using Baidu Translate and um, the thesaurus and coming up with the hardest kind of the hardest, most advanced response they can give me. And, and I'm like, can you tell me what you mean by that? Can you say it differently? And they're like, Like, uh, uh, <laughs> so I always I don't encourage, know. I always encourage daily practice in the writing. You should be able to give me from memory a response to any question at any time. Like doing Hmm. something perfectly one time, it's a good start. But being able to do something well at any time, you know, Mm at -hmm. very well at any time, that's that's an indicator that you've you've mastered a, a language skill.